Hey, good afternoon, everybody. We are coming to you live. Um, this is what we call our Finish Friday, and um, I did just a little tease, just a little bit earlier, to let you know that um, I have received my Restoration Hardware Baby and Child book in the mail a couple of weeks ago. And when I was looking on the cover, I thought, oh my gosh, that's a glazed finish. Um, and I was thinking, okay, I did glazed finishes back in the 80s. I know I was, I was only about three or four years old, but that's okay. But um, anyway, I thought, I can show you how to be able to create this finish. Then I flipped over here, and let me see what page it was. On pa and this is in the Baby and Child um, catalog. And then on page 80, uh, there's a chest here. There's tons of things in here I can show you. But here's a chest that was gilded in silver leaf and it was glazed. And I thought, how fun would it be to be able to do a Finish Friday and show you how to be able to create both of these. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, the star of the show today is two products. One is going to be our glazing liquid that is imperative if you want to be able to do any type of glazing projects. The other thing is we're going to be showing you how to be able to use a gel stain. So that way we're going to be using that on top of the silver leaf that we've done. So I'm not going to go over gilding today. That's another video that you can watch on YouTube. But I am going to go on glazing. Let's go over it. So the glazing liquid and why, basically what it does, it gives you extra protection with your finish. You don't have to come back on top of it and seal it with anything if you don't want to. You don't even have to wax it. The wax would strictly be to be able to get a pretty patina. The other thing is, it's going to thin down the paint that allows you to be able to, whether you model it, whether you create a striated effect, if you want to be able to wood grain it, it's going to go into a whole lot of different areas. And just to kind of give you a heads up in the upcoming months, I'm going to really be going into more things like wood graining, strie, some finishes that are coming back from the 80s that you can use on furniture as well as walls. The cool thing too, you can use this process on walls as well. It's very easy to do, but I thought it's fun to be able to start on something that's small and then that way we will get success over that and then that way we'll go to larger things. So one of the things that I'm going to be working on today, these are some of our um, surfaces that we have available now with Amy Howard at Home. They're great looking, especially if you are building a, um, a finishing business, which um, I'm just going to do a shout out to uh, all of my peeps in our Old World Finishing course. We had a, um, a mentoring time last night. We do it at 8 o'clock um, on Thursday evenings twice a month. What an incredible group. I love their creativity. I love their passion. And it's so cool because we do share that commonality because we love rescuing and restoring furniture and finishes. Um, so, hello, all of you. Um, and if it's something that you want to be able to build a business, you ought to check out the Old World Finishing course that we've put together. It's a great way to launch a finishing business. But we have these surfaces on the... Um, Amy Howard at Home website that you can purchase. And what we did is I came back on top of this. I actually have these made in Italy from pieces that I had rescued. These are my um, corbels that I have had for years and I cast them and I have them made um, in a little town in Italy. And so I painted this corbel that can also be like as a bookend um, in Bauhaus buff. So that is my base coat. On this, I only have one coat. It probably would be good to do two coats, but just to be able to show you this today, I thought it would be kind of simple. So, um, what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to have three ingredients in order to mix up a glaze. They're pretty simple ingredients, but you're gonna have to have your color, your, um, your one-step paint, whatever your color's gonna be, because your glaze can be any color. Uh, what it is that we're gonna be working on to look like uh, this finish on the cover of the Baby and Child Restoration Hardware Catalog is going to be more in a look of like a Selznick Gray with a little bit of black. The other thing besides the paint, which this is your pigment, the other thing that you're going to need is your glaze, and then you're also going to need just some water. I like working with um, room temperature tap water, so having these three ingredients is going to be your glaze. That's all it is. Water, glaze, 
and your pigment or your paint. So they are also going to be one part of each. So if you want to use a measuring cup, let's just say for simplicity, you'll need a half a cup of glaze, a half a cup of the one step, and a half, half a cup of water. You mix that all together. So as you are working on it, let's say you're glazing a piece of furniture, you do want to make sure that um, if it starts to thicken up, if you've had it open, let's say for two or three hours, um, it might have a tendency to thicken up. If that's the case, just add a little bit more water to it, and then that way you can keep working. Um, part of what the glazing liquid does is it gives you some open time. It also gives you protection, and um, it allows you to be able to create a lot of different specialty finishes. So I love it. Glazing takes me back to my happy time of doing, I, I'm, I'm happy now. I don't know why I said that, but I when I started doing um, finishes a long time ago, I did a lot of glazing. It really allowed me to do trompe l'oeil effects and um, a lot of things that I'm going to expose you to later. Alright, so I'm going to take um, my sales knit gray and add this in here. I forgot to do a promo. If you're catching this live, please ask me questions. Send me some love. Let me know where you're from. Um, the algorithms with Facebook, um, as far as just our ranking, and we need to be able to have responses from you. So I'd love for you to just give me some hearts and say, you know, hey, Amy, I'm coming to you from Boulder, Colorado. Um, but the other thing I want you to do is we are a community of people that are wanting to really be able to rescue and restore some of the 30 million pieces, 30 million tons of furniture that's being thrown away in the United States alone every year. When you ask me questions, it allows me to be able to pour into you and mentor you so you raise your level of connoisseurship and you learn and educate and grow your finishes and, and what you're doing on those pieces. But also everybody else that's watching, they learn from that. So there are no dumb questions. Um, and I don't even think of those things to be able to show you here uh, that you're wanting to be able to learn how to do. So just ask me. Um, you know, the other cool thing is because the Rescue Restore paint pretty much goes on any surface, um, it allows you to be able to do this technique on metal, plastic, resin, kitchen cabinets, corbels, walls, whatever uh, the One Step Paint can go on, you can create this finish. Alright, so I'm going to remember again, my recipe for creating this glaze is one part water, one part glazing liquid, which is also water-based and has no VOCs, and also one part of my One Step Paint. Alright, so I'm going to put just a little bit in here. I want to make sure that it's pretty much evenly distributed. Now, your glazing liquid can have a tendency to settle, so just have a little stir stick. Make sure that you stir it up really well. You're going to see it's kind of a white, milky um, consistency. If it's clear, just take a spoon and stir it up really good before you actually pour it into your container. And I'm going to do... Love that. And now I'm going to come back with my um, room temperature tap water. And as always, when you're doing projects, test it first. Measure it. Make a documentation that I was sharing with my um, Old World Finishing Group last night. Always keep a little book that you can document in it as far as when you're making recipes, especially if you're making samples. Um, if this is something that you want to build into a business, it's very lucrative. Um, that you want to just be able to document how much you use. This is just strictly for my color to make it a little bit darker. And then I'm going to stir it up. So I like testing. I like being able to see as far as what it is that I'm working on before I work on a major piece. So always work on maybe an old door, something that you get at Habitat if you're going to be doing a piece of furniture um, or a smaller piece of trim. Alright, so I had some, I'm looking at these, I had mixed this right before we went live. I think this color that I just mixed is pretty good. Alright, so remember again, um, we did this, we painted this corbel that we have and these surfaces are on the Howard Home site. We painted it in Bauhaus Buff before we went live. And I'm going to now come back on top of this and put the glaze. So you want to make sure that you have a rag with you, possibly some 4 steel wool. 
And the other thing is we have two brushes. One is always to apply and one is to take off. So you want to, as you are applying it, this is going to be your positive tool that you're applying the glaze with. And then secondly, you want something, you want a negative tool that you can be pulling it off. So I'll have an extra brush that will act as a negative tool to pull off. I'll have a rag that's lint free as well as some steel wool. Yes, Instagram, we have a question. Yes, they want to know, will this technique work on kitchen cabinets? This is a beautiful technique for kitchen cabinets. And the great thing about it is the glazing liquid acts as a sealant so you don't have to come back with anything on top of that. Um, so if you, um, of course, you'll have your first coat first as far as the one-step paint. And then you can come back with the glazing liquid and your, your um, water and your one-step and you're good to go. You, the only thing, um, as far as depth, and y'all have heard me talk about this, as far as the more layers that you have, if they are sheer enough and they're not too opaque, it can really add to the level of depth and the quality of the finish that you have. So I might even come back with the Mind Your Own Beeswax on top of it after you glaze it. Um, it could, and then buff it could be really, really pretty. Um, or you can come back with a matte sealer if you want to scrub it. If you're one of those people that just love scrubbing down their cabinets twice a year, um, you might want to put the matte sealer on top of it. Otherwise, you're good to go. Are we good, Facebook? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so I'm going to just make sure this is good and stirred up. And I'm just going to use one of my regular chip brushes to apply this. Just realized I got over here without my glasses. And, um, okay, here's the other thing that I want you to remember. Make sure that you are working on a piece of furniture. Let's just talk about a nightstand, for instance. When you're working on the nightstand, I want you to dissect the piece into the areas that you're going to be working on. I don't want you to go in and slather it everywhere with your glaze because what's going to happen is going to start drying on you. So if we're working on a nightstand, let's focus on just doing the top first. Now, you can paint the entire piece and have your base coat on, but as far as doing the glaze, we're only going to work on it in sections because we've only got so much open time to be able to make sure that it's done well before it starts to dry on us. So we'll work on the top, we'll, we'll take the drawers out, and we're going to lay them down. The other thing you're going to notice, you need to be able to lay your piece flat. So if I'm working on a drawer, I'm going to take the drawer out of the nightstand and I'm going to lay it here so I've got complete control over it and I can work from upper left to lower right across it and, and get it done very quickly. So I don't want to be working on it while it's sitting up um, inside that chest. Take it out and work on it like this. The same thing with the side. They're like, you're like, well, what do I do with the side of it? You're going to literally turn that chest on its side. Take all the drawers out. Turn it up so that way you are in control over it. Because when you're working with glazes, it'll have a tendency to run. It's very thin. It doesn't have the opacity of like a paint would, especially like the one-step paint. So you're going to have to lay it down flat so that way you have control over it. All right, these are all really important tips when you're wanting to be able to um, work on glazing. So I'm going to make sure that I test it just a little bit first. You're going to also have to kind of pounce that down in there like this. I'm just going to work on this front section. I'm not even going to try to do the whole thing because I want to be able to have control over it. You're going to see by having this thinner, you're going to see the whole point is that you're seeing what's underneath. That's very, very desirable as part of the whole glazing process. Now I'm going to come back with my um, second brush. You know what? Really quickly, I'm just going to take my my lint-free rag and I'm going to pat it just a little bit. Look at the, isn't this crazy? Don't you love it? All right, now let's take our second brush and look what we're going to do. We're going to stipple it, look at that, down into the crevices. It's going to be kind of dark. We want it to be shadowed. We don't want it even. I want you to be able to go down in the crevices like this. Oh, I'm loving that. Stipple it to where you don't have puddles. But then let's come back just a little bit more. Look at that. See, I want to be able to have it shadowed where that glaze is down into the crevices. Isn't that pretty? Pull that out just a little bit. 
got to turn it this way. Sorry for just a second. I've got to see what it is I'm working on. I don't want it to go all the same color. I want it a little darker down in the crevices and a little bit lighter. I'm going to turn this around in just a second for you to see it. I had a little bit of area that I missed. What do we call that? Holiday. So I'm just going to come back in there, put a little bit more of my glaze. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Mm -hmm. So that way it goes from just that plain bathhouse buff. Now I've got a glazed finish. If I want to, before it completely dries, you've got about enough open time, probably of about 10 to 15 minutes to be able to work on that. After that, you got to leave it alone. It's going to say, I've dried. If you keep messing with me, I'm going to mess up on you. And it's called double processing. So you want to work quickly. That's why I want you to work in, in sections. And then if you want to, before it completely dries, you can come back with some 4 aught steel wool and just kind of come back and lighten it like this. But this is called glazing. This is absolutely no different when you see pieces like this on the cover of the Restoration Hardware Baby and Child um, catalog. All it is, is glazed. So it allows you so much versatility about having any base color that you want and come back on top of it um, with a glaze. And usually what I tell people is allow yourself to stay in kind of the same color family. Of course, Bauhaus Buff is a great color as a base coat. If I wanted to, I could come back on top of this with a glaze. How yummy would this be to do Palmer pink and a glaze on a, um, on a crib? That would be adorable. Um, you could come back with and create pale blues, pale yellows. Just experiment with it because glazing can bring up a whole new world that you never thought existed. All right, so remember, I told you there were two pieces in the Restoration Hardware catalog that I loved. The other one, let me turn back over here, was on page 80, and it looked more like pewter. All right, so the way to be able to get this is not through just paint. This piece is entirely gilded in silver leaf. It's done in a Dutch metal alloy leaf, which we sell on our website. So um, in order to be able to gild this, you will probably need two con something this size. You'll need two containers of size, S-I-Z-E, which is literally your glue. And you need to be able to probably have three books of silver leaf. So that way, let's say, um, uh, you go to an estate sale or garage sale this weekend and you see at one of the triple dressers at an estate sale that you can get easily for $30. You could gild the entire piece, take the hardware off, gild the entire piece, um, and then come back and do this glaze on top of it. This is definitely an Enjoy the Bragging Rights piece and it's so easy to do. There's so many pieces in this catalog that are done in this finish. So you're going to need to gild them first, which I'm not going to go over gilding today. Um, but in order to be able to do that, uh, it's so, so easy. You can go back on one of my other YouTube videos. I would roll on the size on this dresser when you get ready to gild it with a foam roller. We have this on our website too. That will get it on nice and even. Um, all right, so y'all know I have a favorite person in my life. And um, he's been my partner in crime and life. And we love to get in trouble together. Um, that's my husband, Gene. So Gene, come on, <laughs> come on over here. Um, and a lot of people don't realize that um, when we were dating, um, I ricky do <laughs> I ricky do Jean into glazing a wall with me, mm -hmm. and um, that was kind of the first experience that you had it in was. glazing. It was. And so you can use the same process that I'm showing you today on um, on walls as well. So come on over here a little bit more front and center so they can see you. So we're going to be introducing you uh, to a new product that we haven't shown you how to do before. And this is our gel stain. One of the cool things about this is it smells incredible. It smells like you're baking when you're working with it. The consistency of it is um, a gel. So when you're wanting to put it on a vertical surface, it doesn't drag as much. It's really easy to mm -hmm. work with. Um, you can thin it with water, but most people, when they think of stains, they think of this in horrible smell, and they think about um, 
be really runny. Mm -hmm. This is totally different and it is so easy to work with. Once you've used this, it's like you don't go back. And it's water-based. And it's water-based. What I, I mean, like there's no stains that are water-based um, and that smell amazing and that are easy to use. Um, so these are on our website too if you want to be able to um, to take a look at those today. So what we've done is we came back, this is just a piece of masonite board. Um, always talk about uh, doing a, um, a test. And so we have gilded this in silver leaf, which is what I was sharing with you if you want to be able to create this finish. And so Jean, walk us through what this, what we do after we've gilded our piece um, and we want to be able to glaze it. Well, after we've done that, let's, we want to let it dry. If The longer the better if we can let this dry overnight after it's done the uh, silver leaf. And that way it's just giving a chance for that ready to work on it. And because the size is water-based, your stain is water-based, if you start staining it too soon, it can tend to lift the silver leaf. So well, we want to wonderful. wait maybe overnight so that it's good and dry and then we'll be ready to to do the glaze number of ways to to apply it but the way i'm going to show you is done in a striated form rather than the sponging or modeling uh technique because that's the way it was done in the restoration mm -hmm. hardware that's the way it was done in restoration hardware. so first we need a plastic cup, cup. okay thank you and we're going to use um Windsor Gray, and then we're going to darken it with the Kensington Black. So what we'll do is use one to one, one part gray, one part black, because what we're going to do, we're darkening it a little bit because we're going to create a pewter effect. So we'll take a spoonful of one, that's going to be my measuring stick, we'll use a spoonful that's a lot. The black, you know, it's because that's what it takes. Okay. Then we're going to use a little bit of water. Thank you. Room temperature tap water. Mm -hmm. Well, I use the spring-fed water that comes from Norwegia, and it is much better. So we're going to put a little bit about one to one. I always tell everybody, I don't know whether to invite you to do this or not because I don't know what you're going to say. He does this on purpose. We'll talk about it at dinner tonight, how he missed it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll be sleeping in the spare bedroom. And then some glazing liquid. Okay. The glazing liquid gives us more working time, and it also makes the stain, even though the stain is translucent, even a little bit more translucent. So we will. What do you need? Uh, a spoon? Need another spoon. Okay. And so once we've mixed that, and then we're going to use one part glazing liquid. So again, we're doing a small amount, so it's not going to take as much. Only because this is your sample. And this if is you were a small. Ready to do your piece of furniture, that's different. This is a smaller spoon than what I was using originally, so I had to use two of those. And then again, we'll mix this up. Okay, let me ask you a question. So let's say somebody's going to do. A dresser like I talked about mm -hmm. um, that they find at a garage sale this weekend, a double dresser, and they gilded it like mm -hmm. what was in Restoration Hardware. Mm -hmm. About how much glaze do they need to mix in order to be able to have enough glaze mixed up that they don't have to remake it? Well, your stain's going to cover approximately something like this is going to cover about 60 square feet. Okay. So if that gives you a little idea. Um, but we're mixing water and glazing liquid in it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So keep in mind when you start diluting what that dilution ratio is so that that kind of gets into using calculators and abacus and fingers and toes. But uh, something, you know, like what Amy was discussing, this comes in pints, so it, pints going to be the minimum amount. And the nice thing is you can mix up enough if you see you're running short, finish out one side, like mm, finish out the front. Yes. If you have to mix some more, use that same ratio mm, before, and you do the sides. That way you don't want to run out. If I'm doing the front and I get halfway finished, I'm running out, then if I mix more, it may look different. So we want to make sure we've got enough to finish out one side or the other so that it will be looking 
uh, uniform on each side. So once we've that's got the that analytical next, part coming in, it's like planning it. That's really good. And I'm going to take a brush. Did you already have water? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Water. Okay. Everything. And I'm going to apply this. And the main thing with this, you want to get it fairly uniform. You don't want to have a really dark area and then that's heavily applied and then a light area where there's very little. And that'll make a difference in the final finish. You know, too, a lot of, a lot of times, years ago when we were doing a lot of furniture, um, we would glaze, we would do a double glaze. Mm -hmm. We would glaze it once, like this, and even come back with the same glaze and go over it. And it really gave it a lot of depth, remember? Mm -hmm. I just remember that on that we did that time, and I just, I loved it. Um, we will come back, kind of what he's doing, and shadow the edges just a little bit more. But doing a double glaze can give that much more depth. Just make sure that your glaze has probably at least dried overnight before you come back and do a second glaze. All right. Then once it's applied, remember you've got to work quick because when it starts drying, it's going to start double processing. I'm going to use a wider brush because I want more area of coverage, again, to keep it a little more uniform. The striate process is going in one direction and then offload. Keep a cotton rag, clean linen-free rag next to you so that you can apply, or not apply, but brush out and, and wipe off. Mm -hmm. Brush out and wipe. This gets the excess off so that you can have it a little more uniform. Because this is still your negative tool. The positive tool was what he applied the paint with. This is the negative tool, so it's pulling it yeah, off. One, one's to apply, one is to pick up, but we're also smoothing out. You've got to be careful as you're working on it that it doesn't start to get this, ha this like rounded halo effect. Um, and a lot of times... Um, what I'm doing now, I'm finding the darker areas and I'm working on those to pull those up so it's not quite as dark again, mm -hmm. trying to get it a little more uniform. And once I get those heavy puddles up, then I start one long continuous stroke to even it out. That looks great. And again, if I see a dark area, I just kind of work that area out and offload onto my Cotton rag. If the, if they want to be able to kind of come back and halo the edges just a little mm -hmm. bit, would you suggest that they need to let that dry? Yes, absolutely. Because if you come back on it while it's still well, drying, mm -hmm. it's going to double process. Mm -hmm. Meaning, when you apply, what you apply reactivates that uh, glaze that has not quite dried yet, mm -hmm. and will actually remove it. Mm -hmm. So you can even come back. Yes, Instagram. We have two questions on Instagram. One is, can you mix enough for the whole piece but store it in a jar with a lid? Yes, you can. Great Talk question. Make sure it is sealed air tight lid, not just a cover, but yes. it's actually sealed. Yes, and it'll be good for probably about a year. You'll just have to probably add a little bit of water to it. Okay. Second question is, Jean, what type of brush are you using right now? This is just a chip brush. This is one of our chip brushes, so it's actually thicker. Is it synthetic or natural fiber? It is a natural fiber. It is actually uh, hog hair. Perfect. All right, so um, like what I would do if this were me, and this is, remember, we're showing you a finish that's on page 80 of the Baby and Child Restoration Hardware Catalog that I got a couple of weeks ago. I would let this dry overnight, and then I'm going to come back and make the same glaze, and I'm going to add just a little bit more black to it, and then double glaze it on top. It's going to give me a lot of depth. I'm going to love it, and I'm going to shadow it just a little bit um, on the edges. So, um, thank you for coming and helping me teach them glaze, glaze today. And um, if this is something that you find helpful, uh, that if, if us doing these Finished Fridays help you in learning how to be able to rescue and restore furniture, please share it with your friends. Um, we love to see those shares. It means so much to us because um, it really makes us realize that maybe we're making a difference by teaching people how to be able to learn um, these finishes and um, enjoy the bragging rights from them. So have a fantastic weekend, everybody. We will see you at the estate sales. Bye. Bye.